Hey everyone, it's Kim, and welcome back to Bookmarks and Breadsticks. Welcome back to Bookmarks and Breadsticks. If you're new to my channel, a special hello, and welcome to the foodie corner of nonfiction booktube. If you're new to my channel, I cover everything in the food writing space. And remember that food books are not cookbooks. Food writing is a specific world in the world of nonfiction that covers everything from chef memoirs to the history of certain ingredients, global expansion, and often intersects with other subgenres of nonfiction, such as environmental sciences, anthropology, and so on. I'm a big sucker for a great food memoir or for a special topic. So today I'm here to bring you five books all about cheese. So cheese is one of the many true loves of my life. I have, <laughs> I don't know, how many different ways can I tell you that I love cheese? Um, it's a really fun topic for me to learn about, so much so that actually the summer box for Read It and Eat is cheese themed. So one of the books that I'm talking about today will be in that summer box. And there is a cheese making kit so you can make your own cheese. But let me get back let's talk about five different books all about cheese. The first book up is The Whole Fromage, Adventures in the Delectable World of French Cheese by Kathy Lisson. This is from 2013 and is all about Kathy's personal journey to understand the art of French cheeses. How do you make sense of all of it? So she is going to be exploring the caves where cheeses are preserved to understanding old traditions such as raw milk cheese to the modern day ways cheese are made with, with mass uh, pasteurization and mass production. This is a nice little sized book. It comes in, if you take out all of the coda at the end of the book, about 240 pages. I plan on reading it this year. It is one of the newest in my collection. Second book on my list is Reinventing the Wheel. This is Milk, Microbes, and the Fight for Real Cheese. So while the first book is a memoir and it's one woman's journey to understand cheese, this is gonna take a much more scientific approach. It is a book that talks about, I'd say the history of cheese and cheese making. So this book is made by the University of California in their food and cultures department. So this is a good indication you're gonna get a little bit more of a scientific approach when it comes to reinventing the wheel. This does focus at the beginning of cheese making with the introduction of raw cheese and raw milks, all the way over to the current day technology that's used to make cheeses we know and love. But what the book will also cover is what some lost techniques are disappearing along the way. There are some cheeses, which was actually referenced in Dan Saladino's book, Eating to Extinction. There are some cheeses that have been only made by one or two cheesemongers. And when they pass away, the, the recipes and technology and skills are lost forever. And Reinventing the Wheel is going to take a look at some of the technology changes that have been made, some are good and some are not great, and what traditions are lost along the way. This again comes in at under 300 pages, so I do think that this is going to be a fun read, even if it is a little bit more on the science side. A fun fact about this book is that I first saw this book on a shelf in October of 2019. I was at my friend's wedding and we had time. So we went to a bookstore the night before, of course, the night before my friend's wedding, I went to a bookstore. I remember seeing it on the shelves of like that random Barnes and Nobles in the middle of like, uh, just north of New York City. And I never found it on another shelf again. And thankfully, we have places like bookshop.org and other places where you can buy it online. But because it is a university edition, university published books often have a higher price tag because there's, um, it's uh, about economies of scale. They print less of them, so they cost more money. I got this at Open Books for $8, and it was one of my favorite steals. I do think I will, not even I think, I know I will actually be having a read and discover in the next couple of months where I am actually gonna make my own cheese and talk about one, if not the uh, two books all about cheese making. So book recommendation number one was a memoir about a woman's exploration to understand cheese. The second, was a look of cheese making and its history through more of a food and science approach. The third recommended book is another memoir, but this is from the life of Gordon Edgar, and this is Cheese Monger. So this is a, the role of the man or woman or person, excuse me, who is behind the cheese counter when 
it depends on what grocery store you go to, but at some higher end grocery stores, there is a cheesemonger, someone behind that display who knows everything there is to know about cheese and plays a vital role on it, what cheeses are purchased and introduced to that grocery store specifically. And Gordon's book, I think I got it for $1.50 off of like a used section of Amazon and I've never read anything like it. And what I like about Gordon is that he has kind of like that cursy, brash attitude of early Anthony Bourdain. And he completely admits that when he first got his job at the grocery store, he didn't know what the hell he was even doing. And he learned by doing on the job and really became a cheesemonger that he is proud of his career and proud of his career and his stature when at the beginning he was kind of a pot smoking kid who just needed a job. Cheesemonger is the first of its kind. It's a cheese memoir with attitude and information that will appeal to everyone from serious foodies to urban food activists. With unpretentious sensibility, Gordon Egger offers an entertaining, unflinching, on the ground look of the growing cheese movement. Edgar, a smart progressive cheese man with an edge, takes readers from animal rights to business ethics to taste epiphanies with Elan. I really recommend this one. This is um, very short just over 200 pages. This will be a little bit harder to get a hold of, I think. It was published in 2010 by Green Press, but you can find it used on a lot of different um, secondhand stores. I recommend checking with thrift books first. This was really fun to read. I didn't, I, I want to like, it's one of those like dream, you know when they say like, well, if you didn't have to work for money, what would you do? Being a cheesemonger just sounds like so much damn fun and learning like the shady business behind the scenes of like how you place orders for these giant wheels of cheese and where there's like ways that money can, you can undercut each other. Like I had no idea that this world existed. Next up, American Cheese, The Indulgent Odyssey Through the Artisan Cheese World in America by Joe Berkowitz. I read this book last year. I actually listened to it as an audiobook with Dan when we were traveling the country, and it is one of my favorite books of all time. If I had to put it on like the list, you put a gun to my head and ask me what my top book is, you're never gonna get an answer, but maybe top 25, this is definitely a book on here. This is the book that will be featured in the summer cheese making box for Read It and Eat. So pop culture journalist Joe Berkowitz knew nothing about cheese other than he usually ate too much pepper jack. After stumbling upon an artisanal tasting at an upscale cheese shop, though, he realized he'd hardly even scratched the surface. These cheeses were like nothing he'd ever tasted, a visceral gut punch that reverberated deliciousness, and they all were made in America. He felt like he was being let in on the greatest cosmic secret and instantly he was in love. Now I have a full review of this book, which I will link in the cards. And on top of it, I actually got to taste the Rogue River Blue blue cheese that's referenced in this book. It's an expensive cheese, but it was an amazing experience. I love Joe Berkowitz writes for pop culture. He has a very modern take on things. I found his reading super approachable and I know what it's like. I mean, I'm always gonna love Monterey Jack cheese. And when I first started dating Dan almost nine years ago, I could tell you that the guy didn't give a damn about cheese and didn't really under, like didn't have a love for it the way I did. And over the years, we have tried and tasted lots of different cheeses. And listening to a book like this with Dan kind of made us both chuckle because when you see a title like American Cheese, you're thinking of pasteurized cheese product, not exactly cheese cheese, you know? Um, this is a really fun read, very approachable, and it flies by. There is a mix of science, but also it's really about Berkowitz traveling the United States and meeting these small artisanal cheesemakers, learning about cheese competitions, cheese festivals, and it's just a lot of fun. The final book on my list, which is actually one of the first nonfiction food writing books I ever read that completely brought me into this world is The Telling Room, The Tale of Betrayal, Revenge, and the World's Greatest Piece of Cheese by Michael pattern nitty pattern nitty excuse me this book was at my parents house one day this is like I'm talking high school when I still lived at home I found this book and it just captured me the telling room is this there's this cave where these cheesemakers preserve their, their cheeses in these caves because they're cool and damp. It's a great environment. And it's about the stories between different family members and cheesemakers. And it just captivated me. This was the example of when I learned that food writing and nonfiction could be storytelling, could be captivating. So let me read the inside cover for you because it's been probably a decade since I've read this book. In the, pitch, in the picturesque village of 
Guzman, Spain, in a cave dug in the hillside on the edge of town, an ancient door leads to a cramped limestone chamber known as the telling room, containing nothing more than a wooden table and two benches. This is where villagers have gathered for centuries to share the stories and secrets, usually accompanied by copious amounts of wine. It is here in the summer of 2000 that Michael Paternitti found himself listening to a larger than life Spanish cheesemaker named Ambrosio Molinos de la Heras as he spun an odd and compelling tale about a piece of cheese, an unusual piece of cheese. Made from an old family recipe, Ambrosio's cheese was reputed to be among the finest in the world and was said to hold mystical qualities. Eating it, some claimed, conjured long lost memories. But then Ambrosio said things had gone horribly wrong. My card is about to run out of memory, so I will wrap it up here. Let me know in the comments below what other list of recommended reads for a food item are you interested in? What food tickles your fancy? Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.